building secure and scalable AI agent with AG2. Today, guys, I want to share with you a very interesting innovation that was published by the AG2 team. AG2, for those of you who don't know, formerly known as Autogen, one of the leading frameworks in the AI agent space. And at the moment, if you've been following my videos recently, you know that um, I'm a big proponent of AI agents and I definitely see the potential. But I think that many marketers abuse the term AI agents. And uh, to be honest, I haven't seen many AI agents um, work in a way that people believe that they are working. And let me explain. At the moment, most AI agents in my opinion, or pretty much automation workflow automations that uh, do a lot of um, prompt chaining and whether sometimes AI agents are being used, but they are being used with many, many constraints and limitations. And I believe that the further down the line, when the models are going to be more powerful, the AI agents will be more autonomous and do more stuff, um, more useful stuff on their own but at the moment there are a few um, limitations both in the systems and also baked into the models um, one of the limitations is the limitation of security and this is what the AG2 team uh, are trying to solve in this specific um, feature or addition and basically what they have uh, built or proposed is something that is called um, dependency injection and uh, this is the blog post by the way if you if you don't know um, definitely check out the documentation and blog post and the community talks and obviously i highly recommend checking out their discord uh, i just you know make it a point to enter every day see what people are building see the new announcements it's one of the best uh, communities around for AI agents for serious AI agents um, not for people who are just um, messing around. This is a bit more technical. Um, anyway, going back to this uh, notebook, which uh, speaks about the concept of dependency injection. So dependency injection is a secure way to connect external functions to agents without exposing sensitive data, such as passwords, tokens, or personal information. This approach ensures that sensitive information remains protected protected while allowing agents to perform their task effectively even when working with large language models okay now why is this important why is it essential um first of all it gives you enhanced security so your sensitive data is never directly exposed to the llm and this is one of the biggest objections i think that enterprises and businesses have at the moment that they many of them don't want to expose their sensitive data to the LM, and rightly so. So some people are exploring the world of, of local models, which are not po uh, powerful enough yet. Um, and this is a solution that kind of provides a gateway, or I wouldn't say a gateway, but this is a solution that on one hand you can use the proprietary models, the leading models, such as the Anthropic model or the OpenAI model, without exposing your sensitive data. Um, the, another benefit is simplified development so secure data can be seamless, seamlessly accessed by functions without requiring complex configurations and it also provides a lot of flexibility in the, the blog post they share examples of uh, as, uh, like a few use cases how exactly to deploy this um, I wouldn't say that it is complex but I prefer sharing with you um, my conversation that I had with Claude, I think I think it's explained uh, better. So just what I did is basically I copied and pasted the whole thing and I just told Claude to explain it to eighth grade. So this is this is the concept. So imagine you have a really important secret, like your diary's password. You wouldn't want to share your password with everyone. That's similar to this code, uh, to what the code is trying to solve, but for computer program, pro programs. Let's break it down with a simple example from the text. Imagine there's an app that checks your bank account balance. The app needs two things to work, username and password. The special technique uh, they are talking about, which is called dependency injection, is like having a trusted friend 
the computer system who knows your username and password can check your balance for you and never tells anyone else your secret information and it just tells you how much money you have um, it's kind of like in real life instead of telling everyone your password you give your password to just one trusted person and that person handles everything that you, that needs your password so why this is cool we won't cover that because we talked about this or, already um, Another example. Now explain this via the example of the code. So they shared an example in the code, and let's cover this. Uh, I think it's important for those of you who want to understand how it's working under the hood. If you're not interested in learning how this is being uh, used under the hood, I just think it's useful for you to know that if you're building AI agentic workflows, from now on there is a mechanism that will allow you to keep your um, sensitive data separated from what is being exposed to the agents. So and, and I'll share at the end of the video uh, an example of two workflows, one without the dependency injection and the other one with the dependency injection. And it will kind of drive the point in terms of what exactly does this feature do. But let's keep on covering the, this example. So first we have this account, which ha we have the username and the password and the currency. And these are the the password and the username we have alice accounts and bob's account and these are the balances that each one of them have alice uh, alice has balance uh, is a combination of bob and alice so <laughs> alice has 300 bucks bob has 200 bucks each one of them has a username and a password now when we create the get balance um, function the function never sees the actual password and we only get Bob's uh, actual information injected via this depends Bob account, basically. So we just get the, the balance. So it's like saying, hey system, please check Bob's balance. Instead of saying, hey system, here's Bob username and password, please, please check the balance. So this is an example. Um, this is the workflow. So user, check my balance, the assistant, I'll help you check. Then we have the function which gets the balance as it's and it is secure. And then we have 300 bucks, which is the amount of money Alice has in her um, account. The cool thing is the LLM AI assistant or the agent only knows there's a function that is called get balance, but it never sees the username or the password. The secure informa uh, information gets injected into the function separately from what the AI sees. Here's another example, I won't go over it but I'll just sh show you a comparison between uh, two different agents. So compare to, this was my prompt, compare two different uh, agents doing the same task, one with the, the feature of dependency injection and the other one without it. Be very clear because I want to make sure that I understand the concept. So Claude said, I'll create a comparison showing two uh, agents trying to help a user check their bank balance, one with the dependency injection and the other one without. So this is the first agent without dependency injection. We have the function of check balance. So if username is Bob and password is password one to three, return balance, the balance is 300. The agent needs to handle the sensitive data directly. So it gets the password and the username and it checks the balance with the password and the username. And in the conversation of the agent look like this, check my balance, the username is Bob, the password is one to three. The problems, quite straightforward, the AI sees the username and password, sensitive data is passed around openly, credentials could be logged or exposed, the AI could potentially misuse or expose the credentials. On the other hand, when we have the agent with the dependency injection, it looks like this. First, we have the, cl the class, the base context, which contains the username and the password. Then we create the secure account, which contains Bob, and the password, the username and the password. Then we have the, the helper uh, function, which gets the balance of the account. So account annotated account depends Bob account. So here's where the magic happens, as you can see in the comment. And the solution, AI only sees the results. This is how it will look like in the conversation. User, check my balance. AI, I'll check your balance for you. AI doesn't see any credentials and the balance is 300. The benefit, AI never sees the username or password. 
credentials are injected securely behind the scenes, sensitive data stays protected, and AI can't accidentally expose credentials. We don't need an analogy because it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Now let's just ask for more use cases for this. Can you give me more use cases of why this can be useful, especially in context of business and marketing? Let's see what it says, and with this answer, we will conclude the video. Please work. You know, whenever you stream stuff uh, and it isn't working as fast as I expected, I think about, um, I think it was the Steve Job lecture in which things didn't work. Anyway, let me share some practical business and marketing use cases for dependency injection with AI agents. Customer service and CRM integration. So let's say, we have the CRM API key, the sales database password, and the customer service token. So this is one example. AI can safely look up purchase uh, history, check loyalty points, view support tickets, all without exposing API keys or database credentials. Another alternative is marketing analytics and campaign data. So we can have the Google Analytics API key, Facebook ads token for the Facebook uh, in order to integrate with Facebook ads, maybe the MailChimp API key. We don't send this to the LLM. Product inventory and pricing, so a warehouse API key. So you get the gist. It just basically, it allows us not to expose um, API keys, password, and I guess also with more um, even, even other data. Let's make this question. Okay, I get the gist that we can uh, make sure that we don't expose API keys and password, but please give me more use cases of sensitive data that we can inject as context. Let's see. Basically, it, it's not only API keys and password, it's also we can send more uh, extensive data. So for example, let me show you broader examples of sensitive data that can be injected as context beyond just API keys and passwords. So customer personal information, business intelligence data, so profit margins, supplier contracts, pricing strategies, etc. Employee data that we don't want to expose the LLM, legal and compliance data that perhaps we don't want to expose, R&D data, sales and deal data. So there is a ton of things that Actually, we wouldn't want to expose to the LLM, assuming that we want to build like a compliant production uh, ready AI agent flow. And this is why this is so useful. And I think this is also going to be the summary. So um, in this video, we covered a new ability that was um, presented by the AG2 team. Definitely check out all the stuff that the AG2 team are doing. It is called dependency injection, which allows you to securely connect uh, external functions without exposing sensitive data to the agentic workflows. I guess that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, obviously. Uh, if you have criticism slash ideas slash anything that I missed, please leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, keep on automating.